Hi there, I'm Felicia Halpert. And I'm Costa Rodas. And we're from Bergen IT. And today on this beautiful, breezy, late spring day, we're going to talk about outdoor TVs and what you might want to think about before you decide that you want to buy that TV. And before you uh, skip over to what's my favorite drink as I sit by poolside um, and watch the, the game, there are a few things to consider before you get started. So we have six tips that we want to talk about. Um, Costa, the first thing is location, and let's talk a little bit about where somebody might be uh, wanting to watch TV. Well, often it's going to be, you want it on the patio, you want it uh, on your deck, do you have a pool, and do you want a poolside. These are classic places where people want to see outdoor TVs, or if you have a veranda, it might be under the veranda. And I think also, you know, whether it's close to the house or far away, those are also important things to consider. As close as possible is usually best. That way you get good Wi-Fi and it's easier to make the connections to the TV from cable boxes and the like. All right, so um, let's actually, since you brought that up, let's talk about the supporting infrastructure that you might need to have in place. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some things that one might need to have? Well, the first thing you need is electrical. You need to have an electrician run an electrical outlet to where the TV is if you don't already have electrical in place. And if you want to watch cable TV, you're going to want to have a coax cable run from the house to the TV. Um, and what about, you know, if you want to stream? You know, is there if you want to stream, there? you need to have good Wi-Fi outside. And so that means if you don't already have good Wi-Fi outside, you need to set it up. And we can help with that, of course. Okay, so let's talk a little bit now about things like shade and uh, sunlight, daytime, nighttime, um, a little more about where you're watching it and when you're going to be watching it. In general, you're going to want the TV to be in shade because that we don't have to deal with sun glare. And also, it's going to be a less expensive TV. TVs that, go, that operate under direct sunlight are more expensive. And is there any issue about either, you know weather extremes or right like right now for example there's planes that seem to decide to go over our house so are these things that you have well, to think the about with the TV? Is, for an outdoor TV you want it to be a designated outdoor TV designed to be used outside a regular everyday TV if left outside is not going to last very long because outdoor TVs are built to withstand sun rain wind even winter conditions and will last much longer than a standard indoor TV, which might not survive a night in the rain. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the size of the TV. How do I know what, how big a TV to get or, you know, what, what are the parameters to think about? Generally for outside, bigger is better, but so most, you know, it depends on how close you are to the TV. If you're six feet or less away from the TV, a 47 inch is gonna be fine if you're eight feet away, a 55 inch. If you're 10 feet or more away, a 65 inch would be best. Okay. Um, and then let's talk a little bit more about the indoor TV with a, a weatherproof enclosure. Is that, you know, good enough to do or do you have to get an outdoor TV and what's the pricing kind of differential? In you this? have two options, basically. You can get an outdoor TV or you can get an indoor TV and put it into an outdoor enclosure. Uh, the cost difference is going to be small because a good outdoor enclosure for an indoor TV is pretty costly. So you're going to be better off generally getting an outdoor TV. The TV is designed to be outside. Okay. Do you have any um, notes on, you know, kind of general cost of these or? Sure. Um, a good outdoor TV that's in the 55 to 60 inch range is generally going to cost at a minimum $2,500, maybe as much as $4,000. Whereas a 65-inch TV is going to start at about 4000 and might be as expensive as 8000 or more. Ow. And um, so I, I, is, do those last for a long time? Like how long do you An outdoor your... TV, if it's taken care of, you know, well-maintained, is going to last at least five years. You can expect it to last maybe seven to ten years. If it's, for example, in a sheltered location like in a veranda, or under the eve of the house. Right, so let's talk about that a little bit. Like, should you be trying to be under an overhang with the TV, or? That, that would be best. The less that it has to deal with the elements, the longer it will last. Okay. And what are some of the good brands to be looking at? Well, what the top outdoor brand is Sunbright, 
It has been around for more than 20 years and has made TVs designed specifically for outdoor use. Um, there are a couple of other brands in place. Samsung has very good outdoor TVs. The Veranda series is well regarded. And there is a low cost brand called Furion, F-U-R-I-O-N, which has been doing well recently. They've been around for a while, but they've only gained traction in the last few years. Okay. And can I assume then when I buy one of these TVs that it's going to be a smart TV? No. Most uh, outdoor TVs are not smart TVs. Uh, they're not designed with all those electronics in place because they're outdoors. Wow. But you can always add on a... Oh, what do a, I do? Yeah, what do I do? You can add on a, uh, a Roku, for example, or an Amazon uh, Fire Stick in order to get that. And you have to have decent Wi-Fi, of course, outdoors in order to get that. Hmm. Okay. Well, these are just a few of the things to think about if you want to get an outdoor TV. Um, it's not too late to do that. Try to get it maybe even before the 4th of July if you can. And um, if you have any questions about this, we are certainly happy to help you um, figure out whether this makes sense for your budget and for your home um, and for your outdoor entertainment pleasure. So I'm Felicia Halford. I'm Costa Rodas. And we're from Bergen IT, and we're a tech support for the rest of us.